This is section 2-6. We filled out some theorems on the theorem sheet yesterday, the ones from when I was gone. Um, so now we are sixth from the bottom, I said. Sixth from the bottom. Um, if you need to at some point steal my sheet or somebody else's sheet, you can do that. If I have time today, I may even, like, scan this and put this up on Google Classroom when I post this video. Would that be helpful? Yeah. Maybe for you guys? Okay. So I might scan a copy of this. That way you guys can um, look at what you're missing, okay? So uh, this section, 2-6, is very, very similar to section 2-5, which is good, except this is angles instead of segments, okay? So I'm going to write that on my sheet so we can kind of distinguish between the two. Summarize our thoughts to start with. Section 2-5 was talking about segments. Section 2-6 is talking about angles. Okay? But it's a lot of the same properties. So segments versus angles. Do you want to reverse the lights? Hit, the, hit that one and then turn the other two on. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. So our first postulate here that we have to write down <coughs> is 210, and this is the protractor postulate. Do you remember in 2.5 yesterday where we had the ruler postulate? What did that guy say? It said that we could measure, we could measure any line. We can measure any line segment. Guess what this one says? We can measure any angle with a protractor. So I'm going to use a different color again. Uh, I don't know if you can tell the difference between these two. Postulate. Oh, yeah, you can. Postulate 210. This is the protractor postulate. You probably are not going to use this on a um, on a proof at all, but just so that we keep everything in order and, and numbered correctly, we will do that. Um, any angle can be measured with protractor. Does anybody have any uh, troubles distinguishing between a protractor and a compass? I always call the wrong thing the wrong thing. A compass is the little thing that spins around and you make circles with it. This is a protractor. There's a picture of it. Okay, that's a protractor. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and draw the picture of the protractor. And I'll put the little circle in the middle. That's a little protractor. That was pretty good? Nice. Nice. Thank you. There, I know. That was, that was pretty decent. Okay. All right. Next. Uh, postulate 211, if you're following along in your notes. Postulate 211 is the angle addition postulate. What do we do in the angle addition postulate, do you think? Probably adding. Probably add angles. That's a brilliant idea. The angle addition postulates. Okay? And I'm going to do this right here. I'm going to call this guy A, B, C, D. Okay. So, what is the overall biggest angle in the diagram that I've drawn? A, B, C. Okay? So, I'm going to say angle A, B, C. That's the biggest angle there. What is he made up of? What two angles make up A, B, C? A, B, D, and D, B, C. Correct. A, B, D. That's this little guy right here. And angle D, B, C. That's this guy right here. Those two guys. Now, they may or may not be exactly the same size, but those two added together make up the whole thing. So I would say that, like, if this guy is 30 degrees and this guy is 40 degrees, how big is the whole thing? 70, right? You add them together to get the whole thing, okay? That's what these angle addition postulate says. Kind of like the segment addition postulate. Very, very similar. Okay? All right, so let's go to example one real quick. <coughs> this is very similar to the example that I just gave you. Uh, and the measure of angle one, they want us to find that. This is what we don't know, so I'm going to put a question mark on it, okay? You guys will have a handout today for homework, so feel free to mark any of these diagrams uh, when, when they give you this stuff. Angle 2 is 56. Okay, 56 goes here. And then the whole thing, J, K, L, this whole amount, 
is 145 degrees. They want us to find that angle? Question mark. Can you just subtract them? Yes, you can. What do you subtract? 56 from 145. Yep, 145 minus 56, or subtract 56 from 145, and that is, somebody's got to help me, 1, no, 90, I don't know, 90, what? 99? 91. 89. 89? 89. 89. I was right. 89 degrees. There we go. Okay? Those two angles added together have to be 145. So, it says justify our steps. How do we know that we are allowed to do that? The angle addition postulate. The angle addition postulate, or postulate 211, allows me to do that. What I just did. Wow. Wow. Right? Okay, now, next. We have the supplement theorem and the complement theorem. This, this you guys already should know, right? Supplement, I've kind of like drilled into your brain. Uh, and complement, same way. Mm -hmm. Supplement theorem. Uh, this is theorem 2.3 and theorem 2.4. Supplement theorem complement theorem. If angle one and angle two form linear pair, they are supplementary. If angle one and angle two make a 90 degree angle, they are complementary. Okay, what's a linear pair look like? A linear pair. Anything that makes a straight line. So I have two angles making up a straight line. So here's my straight line. There's that. Let's call this angle one. That's angle two. Those two angles live on a straight line if I add them together, right? I'm adding two angles together. They live on a straight line, so they are supplementary. These two angles right here make up a 90 degree angle. I'm going to put a little box in the corner. Angle one, angle two. So that you can see, those make up a 90 degree angle, so they are complementary. How do you remember which one is which? Complementary, supplementary. C comes before S, so which one comes first, 90 or 180? 90 comes numerically first before 180. C comes before S in the alphabet. You betcha, that's how I remember it. Okay? All right, all right. Good, good, good. Okay. All right. So let's go down to example two. Can I can I do that? Give a second. Okay. I'll do this. <coughs> okay. I'm gonna bump down to example two. They're still writing. That's fine. Uh, using a transit, a surveyor sights the top of the hill and records an angle measure of about 73 degrees. They have these like kind of, they're kind of like laser beams, uh, and it's called a transit, and they measure like distances and they measure like angles and stuff. My husband used one, uses one of these. I don't know if they call it a transit, but he basically uses it sometimes when he's uh, building a new house, or he did it when they were building our garage behind our house because he wants to make sure that the ground is level, right? Because this is the, the land always level. No. Right? So he has to like set this laser beam out to to basically, I don't know if it kind of measures from sea level or what it does, but it, it basically tells you whether it is, the ground is level or not because he wants to make sure the cement is poured level, otherwise you're going to have drainage wrong and all that good stuff. So, this is what they're doing. They, they measure a 73 degree uh, measurement from, let's see, records an angle measure of about 73 degrees. 
What is the measure of the angle to of the top of the hill that it makes with the horizon? Okay, the, the top of the hill makes with the horizon. So here is this guy right here. They want to know this angle. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Pretty sure. This angle right here, they want to know what that angle is. Okay, they're saying that this surveyor records that as a 73 degree. So angle one is 73 degrees, and they want to know from the horizontal what that angle measure is. Right? Well, how? What, what the heck is that? Okay, so basically going from horizontal, okay, they want to know what angle this makes, okay? Now, wouldn't it be the same as the other one? Because the other one's going from the horizontal as well. This angle right here, will that not be the same as angle two? You betcha, it will be, because both of them are going from horizontal, right? Okay. So, that angle at the top and angle two will be the same. So are we finding complement or supplement? Complement, because they have to be a 90 degree angle. This guy right here is 90, okay? So, how do we figure out what angle 2 is? Subtract. 90 minus 73. And that is a 17 degree. It's like an angle of descent. A 73 degree angle of descent. To the bottom of the hill. <coughs> okay. Good, good. Alright. Uh, with these three theorems at the bottom. 2, 5. These are very similar to what we did yesterday, the reflexive property, the symmetric property, the transitive property. I am not going to rewrite these down. Here's how we're going to cheat. Up here, do you see where we did theorem 2-2, two, two, reflexive, symmetric, transitive? I'm going to put four angles. It's theorem 2-5. Okay. So those same properties hold from segments. They also hold to angles, right? But it's called theorem 2, 5 instead. And I'm not going to rewrite them because they mean the same thing, right? So the reflexive property, the symmetric property, the transitive property from segments, like if AB is the same as CD and CD is the same as EF and AB is the same as EF, those are the same for angles, right? If angle 1 is the same as angle 2, and angle 2 is the same as angle 3. Then is angle 1 the same as angle 3? Yes, you betcha. But they call it theorem 2, 5 instead of theorem 2, 2. So these are for segments so and moving range. No, 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 no. Because this just applies for segments. Theorem 2, 2 applies for segments. This is just the same exact stuff for, for, uh, for angles. But they call it theorem 2, 5. I just don't want to write each one of these three down again, right? I'm just going to consolidate my thoughts up there, right? Okay, let's go to the next page. All right, it's Friday. I gotta remember that. Okay, okay, okay. All right, we've got a couple of, uh, proofs here. So they prove the symmetric property. I'm not gonna go through that proof. If you want to read it, you sure can. Um, of how they go ahead and prove that two things are symmetric, like how we know that if angle A is the same as angle B, then angle B is the same as angle A. They have Excuse me, they've gone ahead and proved that. So if you want to read through that, that's kind of interesting. But I'm going to go down to this one, okay? These ones are a little bit harder to understand than just straight complement supplements. So listen to this, okay? This is called the congruent supplements theorem. So, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so this is what this says. Look at this diagram right here. And let's say that angle one and angle two are supplementary. That means they add up to be 180 degrees, right? Angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. Do they look supplementary? Do they look like they add up to be 180 degrees? Yeah. Yes. What other two angles look like they add up to be 180 degrees? Three. 2 and 3. So 2 and 3 are supplementary as well. Okay. Now, this is, this is kind of like the transitive property, right? Uh, except just a little different. If angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, and angle two and angle three are supplementary, then Maddie said angle one and angle three. Well, are angle one and angle three supplementary? No. No. What's true about angle one and angle three? Yeah. They're equal. They're equal. So angle one and angle two are equal. That's what we draw from this. Angle one is equal to angle three. 
right? It's not that angle one and angle three are supplementary. Angle one is equal to angle three, okay? So let's say the angle one is 120. What's angle two? 60, right? Okay, because they are add up to be 180, if angle one is 120, angle two has to be 60, right? But then two and three are supplementary, so what's three have to be? 120 again, is that consistent that one and three are the same? You betcha. Okay, that is 120 as well, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to write that over here. So congruent, this has a name. This is theorem 2.6-THM, 2.6. I'm running out of space on my paper. Theorem 2.6. And I'm going to call it the congruent supplement theorem. I'm going to say if angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary and angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary, then angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. If 1 and 2 are supplementary and 2 and 3 are supplementary, then 1 and 3 are the same. Not supplementary, but they are the same. I'm trying to make it like unblurry. There you go. Is that better? <coughs> if one and two are supplementary and two and three are supplementary, then one and three are the same. I'm going to do angle one, angle two, angle three. There we go. That's how I'm going to write him. One and two add up to 180, two and three add up to 180, and one and three are going to be the same. <coughs> Ready to the next one? Next. Next. All right. So, this one, congruent complements theorem. Four and five are complementary. I'm going to write that down here. Four and five, angle four and angle five are complementary. But angle five and angle six are complementary as well. So, this kind of looks like the transitive theorem again. Four and five, five and six. So I want to make the link between 4 and 6, but what's true about 4 and 6? They're not complementary. They are equal. They are equal or congruent, right? So if 4 and 5 are complementary and 5 and 6 are complementary, then the two that are not being shared, right, 5 is being shared, you can kind of get crossed off if you think about it that way. Then that means 4 and 6 have to be the same major, right? Okay, so 4 and 6 have to be the same major. All right, if you need to see a visual of that, let's say this is 20 degrees, what would angle 5 have to be? 70. <coughs> 70, if they are complementary. And then if that's 70, then what's angle 6 going to be? 20. Is that true that angle 4 and angle 6 are the same? You betcha. You betcha. All right, so let's write that down. All right, I'm going to go back to my red pen over here. All right, so this is theorem 2-7. This is the congruent uh, complement theorem. If 1 and 2 are complementary, and 2 and 3 are complementary, then... One is congruent to three. It's basically the same wording as above, but complementary instead of supplementary. So if you want to rewrite this statement again, or put complementary in there, you sure can do that. Okay, I'm going to try my best to do this here. Um, how do I want to do this?
There's that guy. And we'll do this guy. One, two, three. Ugh. That was kind of ugly. I do one L that's a 90 degree, and then I do another L that's a 90 degree. Like overlapping from the first time. One and two add up to 90, two and three add up to 90, one and three are exactly the same as it has to be. Have to be, have to be, have to be. Okay? Okay. Um, on the bottom of that page, there's a proof of that, of why that works. If you want to see that, you sure can. This one is a two-column proof, so this is set up really nicely. There are lots of steps to this. Woo! There's lots of steps. One, six, actually. That's a lot of steps in a proof. Okay, but they use some of the same stuff that we've been used to using, right? Uh, definition of supplementary angles, okay, we've seen that before. Substitution, reflexive property, subtraction, definition of congruent angles, that type of thing. We've, we've seen all of those reasons before, hopefully. Okay, let's go to the back side. We're going to do this proof and then we'll stop. This proof, we'll write down vertical angles and then we'll stop, okay? So, <coughs> all right. Um, all right, prove that vertical angles two and four are congruent. Two is this angle right here, and four is this angle right here. <coughs> all right. Um, and, and we're going to use something that we just got done writing down, all right? Is this going to involve the complement theorem or the supplement theorem? Which one? Supplement, why? Because we have we have straight lines, right? We have, we have 180 degrees. We have straight lines when we do that. Okay. They don't tell us what we're given. We're basically given the picture. So let's draw some information from this picture. What can we say about angle two? One and two. Okay. So let's do let's do one and two are supplementary. Okay. I heard India say that one and two are supplementary. Angle one, angle two are supplementary. Do you agree with that? Yeah. One and two. It's kind of hard to see up here on the board. If you look on your diagram, you can see. Angle one is this guy over here. Angle two is this guy up here. Okay? Now, what else do you want to say from that thing? Okay. Now, we can say two and three are supplementary. We can say three and four are supplementary. We can say one and four are supplementary. Which ones are we going to try to say are equal to each other? Three and four. We want two and four to be equal to each other, right? We want two and we want four to be equal to each other. So we have to use four, but what do we want to be supplementary to four? And four. What do we want to be supplementary to four? What is that? According to judgment, man. <coughs> what, what needs to be supplementary to angle one? Because four is supplementary to three and is supplementary to one. But which one's going to help me according to the theorem? I need one in there, right? They have to share the same supplementary angle, right? Two and four have to share the one, right? In order for this theorem to work. So if I say angle four is supplementary to three, I'm not wrong, but it's not going to help me, right? I need them to share the same angle, okay? So those guys are supplementary. We're trying to prove that angle two is congruent to angle four. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. What? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So we don't even really care about three. We could have done this a different way. We could have said angle three and angle two are supplementary, and three and four are supplementary, right? In that case, they're sharing three, right? But we want them to share the same one, otherwise this doesn't work. All right, so that's what we're trying to, that's what we're given, that's what we're trying to prove. We're given a lot more information than that, but that's the stuff that we need, right? So let's write down our proof. What do we start with? The given. Given. Angle one and angle two are supplementary. Angle one and angle four are supplementary. <clears throat> then what?
Can we jump right to them being equal to each other? Yes. Yeah. Angle two is congruent to angle four. How do I know that? Yes, but what theorem tells me that? Or what? <coughs> the congruent supplement theorem. If you want to write down theorem, is it two seven? Two six. Theorem two six. You can do that too. Then what? How exciting was that proof, folks? Yay. Yay. Okay. Now, really the hard part in that was what did you give it? Because they didn't give us anything with the diagram. Right? You have to decide what is important information for you to have. Okay? All right. Now, um, one more thing. We're going to write this guy down, and then I'll give you your homework assignment and tell you the top ones to do whatever. Um, but two and four are opposite each other. These guys are called, excuse me, these guys are called, Vertical angles, do you remember that? Vertical means across from each other. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean up and down, right? Vertical doesn't necessarily mean up and down. So, which ones are vertical angles here? One and three. One and three. And two and four. <coughs> All right, so let's write that down and then we'll be done. Oh, shoot, we're at the top of the next page. Maybe we'll put this down at the very bottom. Can we add one to the very bottom even though there's not a space for it? Can I add them right here? Okay. Then we don't have to start a new one. I'm going to do theorem 2.8. You can go out of the back if you want to if this bothers you. So theorem 2.8 is the vertical angles theorem. I'm going to put if vertical, then congruent. So one, two, three, four. <coughs> There's my diagram. One, two, three, four. Which ones are congruent? The vertical ones. Angle one and angle three, angle two, and angle four. They will use vertical angles a lot, a lot, a lot. So why don't you put a star by him? Because we hadn't proved it yet. So what we just did was prove this theorem, right? And now it's a theorem that we can use to yeah, So put a star by him because we will use him a lot in a lot of other proofs, okay? I'm going to give you your homework assignment. I'll tell you which ones to do. Actually, I'll just put it up here. Watch, watch, watch what I'm doing. Watch what I'm doing. Right here. Um, you have skills practice and practice. There are questions at the top, like one through six, and there are questions at the bottom, okay, like a proof. Um, questions here. Why don't I just have you guys do the top parts? So the top three on this page, the top six on the other page, and then we'll worry about the proofs on Monday, okay? If you want to start the proofs, you sure can, okay? All right, so there's your instructions, Elena, or whoever, whoever else is watching this.